Hello everyone, I'm back. Okay, um, now the video that you've just watched, we pretty much stuffed all of these pockets and I was uh, starting on this one and then I said at the end I was going to go to my sewing machine and stitch around any elements that needed it and um, sort of start finishing this one off. At the same time, it dawned on me that I had a little stash of um, pre-made snippets um, sitting in a box. So I went hunting through it and I found this one. And I've chosen this piece to actually go up here. Now I'm liking it for a couple reasons. It brings in a little bit more of this yellow and this um, tea stained piece of lace, which I did years ago, um, matches the threads that are popping out the top. So it sort of just helps tie it all together a little bit more. So I knew something would pop up for this and it's even got a little bit of slow stitch on it. So I think it is the perfect piece. So that is gonna go there and I'll probably use some PBA glue and then some art glitter glue to just make sure that's nice and secure. I could probably even put a thread or two through but that might be a little bit tricky. But anyway, that is going to be on there. So I'll just show you what I did in the way of sewing machine work. I stitched around the little daisy card. So it's now embellished. Now let's just have a peek inside. I didn't do anything there. That's all the same. I just put a, a little stitch down that edge just to give it a little touch of something. Um, let's have a little look. I stitched around the big journal card. <coughs> Um, what else did I do? Nothing in there. It's changed. I stitched around that little card. Oh, we're in the center now. So I did the four of them. That one, that one, and that one. I use a chocolate colored thread. I just find it just goes with everything. <clears throat> Even if I was doing something really pinky pink, the chocolate just works. It's not often I seem to change my thread color to a cream or anything like that so it's just sort of my signature i guess the chocolate thread okay oh yes i did a zigzag down there gosh it was only like 10 minutes ago but already it slipped out of my mind got a flip out there there's so much room still to do embellishing in this journal, a little stitch across the top, just a little highlight. You sort of don't want to compete too much with what the image is, but it's nice to put a little something just to sort of tie it all together. And the music one at the back had a, a border placed around it. Okay, so I'm going to say that this journal is complete. Yep, I'm really happy with that. So I'm going to Bring my little centerpiece in there. I'm going to tie it closed. Now I've made a an epic decision. I've decided that I'm going to sell these two bag journals. So as I'm pre-recording this, it's actually only the first week of August. And you're probably watching this video possibly middle of August maybe even later depends on how many videos from the journal of stitchery come through from the roxy creations project so i've decided i'm going to definitely list these two i haven't even created the third one yet so we'll see how that sort of rolls and if i'm happy enough to release her into the public she may be also sold the fourth journal i have another idea for so i'll just keep that one to myself for a moment because i'm still sort of thinking through if that's how i want to proceed with that journal and um so what i'm thinking i'll do is um what are we in we're coming into middle of august you'll be watching this august september so the first of september let me just have a look at my little calendar yeah first of september is a thursday so what I'm going to do is around that week, now let's make a decision so at least you've got a bit of time. 1st of December, I'm going to put the listings of these two journals in my Etsy store for sale. Now, um, 
around that date, I'll do an actual video showcasing them and sort of talking through what's all part of the journal. But just a bit of a heads up for the girls that are watching me through this whole series. They are going to be listed for sale. In addition, I might have a bit of a look through my stash of journals that I've made over the years and there might be a couple others that I might add to it. But no promises. They're like little treasures that takes a bit to get out of my hands but it's, it is getting a little out of control and I looked at my bench where I keep them all thinking these would be joining and I'm like come on enough enough's enough so that's that one finished I just need to attach that little element there which I'll need something fairly strong because it's quite a heavy little stitched piece plus there's a wadding in behind it so I really need something that's going to soak into that wadding and then grab it's a little bit different to this piece on the, the side so there's my one little nature journal so let's pop in the side and let's see where I'm at with this one so once again I also went through and stitched some additional pieces in here so it's really just a bit of embellishing now so we'll have a little flip through so I finished that page and stitched down there like that I did a little stitching around that one there got the little flip out there and a little decorative element there okay I do need to find a label for that pocket so while I'm here or do I want something else I just opened the butterflies up yeah let's do something with the butterflies so when I fussy cut my butterflies out, I leave the stamens um, or the antennae, not stamens, they're in flowers, the antennae on the butterfly, just in case I want to use them. But being that they're really pale, I'm going to just snip it off completely. I'm just going to get up and go to my sewing machine because I need a piece of that thread. Just a scrap. Here we go. So I just want a little piece of the cotton from my sewing machine and I'm going to put a dob of glue on the body of my butterfly and then just twist this and lay it down in that glue and just set it aside for a moment to dry. And that is going to be my new antennae. Whoops pull it out don't rush no need to rush okay so what I might do is pick up my papers and maybe do a little bit of collage here there's a little scrap that just happened to be sitting there let's ink it and see where this leads us what's my butterfly look like I need something a little bit paler under him. Let's get a little bit of Shakespeare in there as well. Layer upon layer. Yeah, I like that. I can't believe I'm going to sell some journals. Do you know how hard that is for me? It's silly, isn't it? I sort of, I don't know. Like I do sell the odd journal, don't get me wrong. But they're sort of, I don't know, it takes a bit. If it's a, a piece that's requested from a family member or friend as a gift, not a problem. I'm 100% from the moment I start that journal, it's not mine. It's, it's going. So it's sort of easy. I need a glue page, something to glue on. Hang on. So it's like I don't get attached to it. But when I make a journal to explore techniques or explore a theme or I sort of want to do a little series of journals like these where it's just all about me playing with Edith Holding, they're my journals. They just, I don't know, it's, it's weird. But the problem is because I tend to make... Um, 
a series of things. I don't often do one journal unless it's a special order. It just gets multiplication factor gets out of hand. Like Christmas journals, for example. I made some last year because I had all of this Christmas paper that I'd been hoarding for years. So I thought I'm going to make myself some Christmas journals. And then as the process sort of went on, I got more on the challenge of using the paper than the actual journals. I don't know if this makes sense. So for example, I had like probably eight different combinations of paper, different colors, different themes, etc., etc. So the challenge I gave myself was to create these eight journals with the um, different papers and to get them at least into a journal. And then I thought, what do I need eight journals for? This is ridiculous. I think I've kept three and the rest I put up and sold, they're gone. And it was nearly liberating because when I finished with these eight journals looking at me, I'm thinking, oh my goodness, I enjoyed the journey, I enjoyed the process and the challenge of using the papers I had purchased nothing else and make what I can from them, which resulted in the eight journals. So, you know, it was a great amount of fun and all the YouTube ladies around were all doing journaling and, you know, playing with their, with their um, um, Christmas theme things. So it was great fun. I had a little project and I was busy, busy, busy. And then I got to the end of it. I'm like, oh my goodness, I've now got eight journals. I do not even journal. I do art journal because I get to sort of play. I'm going to just put that there, I think, a little element. I do, you know, play in journals, but it's more collaging and art. I don't write. I'm not a writer. I'm barely a reader. I'm one of those that I go through a page, I'll read it. And I'll get to the bottom of the page and I couldn't tell you what was on that page, especially if it just is a book that's not holding me. If it's a book that's gripping me, which are very rare, yeah, great. I'd be able to be fine. But majority of books, it's like I'm forcing myself to do it. And in the process of reading it, like 10 thoughts will come into my head about something completely randomly different in real life. So it's a bit of a lost cause, to be honest. So I'm not a reader and I'm not a journaler. So yeah, I'll finish that. I'm moving along. Let me just bring that up to the camera. So it was just a simple bit of blue paper, a little bit of Shakespeare, the butterfly, a little antenna I made out of the thread and just a little label. Simple, easy. Oh, it's so tempting just to go for it, but oh, maybe I should do something here. I'm feeling the need for a flower. Let's see what we've got in the cut out flowers. Even a bird. Should be restraining myself a little. Anything cut out ready to go, that would just be lovely. That's got potential. And it's cut out. Now I do have in the center of that, there's white. So you could cut it out or just give it a little bit of an inking and it'll look like it's the Edith page underneath. Here's a little trick because sometimes it's hard to get in there and my fingers are, don't bend like they used to. So I've just sort of done a little touch of something there. Now I'm just looking down at the paper. I want to bring in some different papers. Something that doesn't... Oh, the stripe's nice. Is the stripe really what we want? It's because I'm thinking about Christmas. Let's have a little look here. I do like that paper. Let's do something with this. Okay, tear ruler. We're off on a tangent again. Let's get this. Now I do have an over the page hanging element, which I mentioned in the last video that I saw on one of Rachel's videos. 
um, I think it was, well, okay, you're watching this video mid-month, maybe towards the end of the month. And this over the hanging, over the page hanging thing, <laughs> she created at the beginning of August. I'm pretty sure I've watched this video in the last 24 hours. So yeah, it's beginning of August if you want to go and see Rachel's version of it. It um, came up beautifully. So I'm just going to tear a good piece of this off in a weird shape and see if that complements that at all. I am covering up a fair bit of Edith there. Can I live with that? Maybe I need to just back down that a little bit. Just a snippet of it, yeah, happy with that. Just going to ink up the edge just to give it a little something. Oh, I like that. Imagine that as wallpaper. I presume it's wallpaper on a wall in your house. Oh, to die for. Do I do it that way? And I'm liking it that way because it sort of feels like it's enclosing, enclosing it, if that makes sense. I'm still shell-shocked that I'm going to sell these journals. And that's silly. I can't even believe I've pulled into a Edith Holding book. That still is traumatising. Isn't it amazing that these books have become quite an, an enigma within our society? It's amazing. Now, I think we need something to make it bounce away from the page a little bit, like break it up. So I'm thinking I want a label and quite a large one. And are they in here? No. They're all butterflies. Oops. I'm sure they're around here somewhere. Birds. I do have some that I made myself, but I don't think... Oh, I don't mind that. Well, we'll have a little look at it. Not making a commitment yet to the idea, but I do like the size of that. I wonder if I can rough tear that. No, I won't. Now for selling the journal. Now technically I don't ship overseas because the freight is crazy. But what I might do is I'll do the exercise where I pretend that it's going to a far, far away land. So say the uh, UK and um, the USA. And I'll just see what the freight comes to. I will add it into the purchase price of the, you know, where the freight's added additional. And I'll just see, you know, what it comes up I'll leave it there and then it's up to you if you if you're happy enough to spend the money I do like the frame but I don't like it with that flower hmm maybe I need to look for I don't like the flower actually flower's gone maybe I don't like the frame I don't know Gee, I wish there was a bird fussy cut out for me. That would have been nice. I'm going to put... I'll just leave the frame. Let's have a look in another book. Yeah, so what I was saying is I will work out the freight. Sort of worst case scenarios. Then um, there's some birds cut out. Then I will um, have it there. If you are someone from the UK and you did decide to <clears throat> buy one of the journals, at least it's calculated, you'll see it. Now, what I will do is when I actually get your details, if you decide to go through with it, I will um, look at 
um, I will refund you anything that is not needed because, you know, at the end of the day, that's more craft supplies. I sort of do like him with that behind him. But he does need to rest his little claws on something. What will we get? A little bit of paper here. Bit of antique French paper, which is confusing in itself in a English journal. Now I've covered most of the pretty paper. I'll get rid of that label. Maybe I do a smaller label. I like the blue because it's picking up on the blue in that tartan and it's sort of a muted blue. This is a, a label pack of stamps that I got from uh, Dark Room, I think it is. Um, I can see it from here in my trolley. I might just grab it and show you because if you did want to track it down, it's really good. And then it allows you to do different colored stamps. So you were doing Christmas and there's some really big labels in it, which is what probably drew me to it. Yeah, I like that, actually. Gives the bird something to rest his foot on. Especially if I can tuck his back claw. Yeah, there we go. And I like how that piece of antique paper has the numbers underneath it. So I'm going to proceed with that. I've hidden the French element. So we're not screaming French paper, but I've got a piece of antique paper from one of my French books here and the colour is great for this journal. So we'll just get this little guy inked a bit. That's what I'm doing over on the side here. I'm just using my ink dabber just to put a bit of darkness around him because he's got a little bit of white showing so just putting a bit of glue on him now I also need some glue on the label and I'm going to try and position his claw in behind there and also there this is a tricky little move so the label is crooked now it's straight bird is down done and it looks like he's got his little foot resting on that there we go so I'm happy with that so the flower didn't happen we went to a bird all good yeah I like that plus I got my, one of my favorite papers into it now maybe we do it again just to keep the theme happening we might just do a little bit more of that paper here yeah just a touch of it I like how that blends too with that ticket and maybe we put this little guy on I've always wondered what that was about because you see it in a lot of the American um, ephemera packs especially Tim Holtz and anything he does any fabrics that are that vintage feel with imagery and it um, send to here, return to sender, send to here. So I'm going to put that on there, but I'm going to add one of these. Now I did pull one of these out in the last video 
to add to the journal, which I did further along. And there is some hanging on a paper clip up here. So that will give, give the person that gets this journal some little snippets to play with, tucked in around. Okay, I'm happy with that. What did I do on the other Shakespeare page? Oh, the butterfly. Yep, lovely. Okay, so something here. Does this guy fit here? Yeah, I like that. So he's now found a home. I'm going to stick this one down, then I'm going to hop up before I forget and show you the stamp pack that all these came from. Before I get sidetracked. One moment. Dark room door is the brand. I believe I've mentioned them before, they are an Aussie company and um, great quality stamps. You can cut them into pieces as so that you just have the one, but in this scenario, I've left it whole so that I can just do mass stamping. And if you get a, a big um, piece to clip it onto, what do you call it, a piece of perspex to make it nice and strong, you can even use this case. Um, these cases are great. DVD cases to store your stamps in is a great idea, which is how they present their product. So they have a massive range. So if you get on to their website, that's the code, lots of labels, DDRS211. So definitely worth the purchase, especially if you want to do a bit of your own, own work. Might just put a piece of paper there. I just feel like it needs a little pop of something over there. I just want to ink that a little bit. Okay. Just a little pop of colour. Okay. Yep. away before it gets lost in the abyss. I wonder if my little flower will suit there. Yeah, that's where he's going to go. There's Bandit. Goodness me, you won't believe what they did. I tell you, they bloomin' destroyed um, a bed. I was a little late to letting them out of their nighttime area. We've sort of got a temporary caged area well it's some of those fences that you would put up on an industrial site if you're building a house or something and you they all click together and um, protect um, you know protect people from going in and getting hurt so I've got a few panels of it and I use that to um, sort of keep I'm gonna just pop that around there just for you know for whatever reason. I use it to keep the dogs inside, or not inside, in enclosed in the evening and they can access an outdoor section plus uh, for toilet and then they're undercover in bad weather, in hot weather, cold weather, they're protected by three sides of the house because it sort of connects to a spa that we've got. So that's sort of another, a wall if they need to sort of get in and sort of protect themselves and um, yeah so I've made this little video it only goes for a minute and I'll attach it at the end of this one and it's me walking with them to their area to discuss what has gone on so it's quite cute so I'll, I'll attach that to the end of this video for you now I do want to do something with this it's got huge potential so I'm just going to move the journal out of the way and we'll have a play with this over the, over the, um, 
you know what I mean. So first of all, I'm going to get my pretty paper involved because, you know, just have to. Plus, it's already coming through the journal already. So consistency. I'm not going to bring the paper up to the spine or the fold because that's just going to create bulk that it doesn't need. Yeah, that'll be pretty. That could have a little photo put on it. A little spot to pop a picture or a photo. I think Rachel said that this idea wasn't hers. She was sort of, as, as you watch her video, she sort of felt like it was Andrea from Artie Mays or Carol. Carol Tinson which is um, possible too. So she's not 100% sure, but, you know, at the end of the day, could be anyone. We're all doing these little nifty, little foldy, tucky things. And it'd be funny if it was actually Rachel who did it and she's just forgotten because she does so many little tricky things with paper that... I think she wouldn't be real sure of who did what where. I need a pop of these stripes, I think. So I'm just going to tear down. I do like stripes. This is a paper I used a lot in my Christmas journals. Pepper's just come to the window and looked at me. So that tells me my husband is in the process of going through the shower. And in anticipation, Pepper's like come to say he's coming. They're not um, inside dogs at all because at the end of the day, they're hairy mutts and I try and keep a fairly clean house and they drop a lot of hair but there's certain times through our day that we do invite them inside and they can participate in the activity and one is breakfast so they get to come in and just sit with us on the floor next to us they may or may not allegedly get a snack you ask the vet the vet will say bandit is a little not overweight but he is certainly gathering condition which is okay for now because he's a growing lad he went and had his needles the other day so this is the conversation that i had so yes i need to consider someone's waistline the reason I'm lining that up is because my text under here is upside down. I do want to cover it. I'm thinking I might actually pop this little piece of fabric in there. That'd be sweet. Can I get it in there? Because in my wisdom, I've glued that down. I don't need to go too deep. I can cover the whole thing. Yeah, let's do that. Oh, I like it. When I can add fabric to things, I do like it. So yeah, as I was saying, they come inside and sit with us for breakfast and maybe get a little corner of a crust. There we go. Lovely, just a little bit of fabric there. And Maybe a little label, maybe a little butterfly. What have we got? I don't mind that. So let's just, because I've already got one in this journal of this nature. So to have a second one would be rather sweet. I'm just 
snip all that out. I'm going to need to jump up and grab some more thread. Just need to ink the edge of him a little bit where I can see some white. Okay, that will sit there nicely and I will get some thread. Won't be a moment. little threads I need to wipe my fingers I can feel glue building up so I'm just going to fold it in half flip over my butterfly grab my art glitter glue just put a little smear of it in there and lay down that thread Okay, whoops, I've got sticky fingers, so it's making it harder than it needs to be. All right, let's get this little butterfly down. So now we've got a little pocket there that we could pop something into. And I had thought at the time some little tags, but what I'm thinking now is maybe one of those bird stamps. I put all my bits and pieces back into their little box. So just excuse me while I rummage. Maybe a little bird stamp. And maybe some of these other little stamps that they could use. Oh, there's a nice little tag. Maybe one of those as well. Yeah, I like that. And where's those other stamps? Because I might just put a stamp on the front of the pocket just to embellish it a little more. There they are. So they're a little loose, bluish, greeny toned stamp. Yes, there is. <clears throat> yeah, I'll do the blue one. Maybe we'll add a little cheesecloth. Let's get this out of my way. Where's that cheesecloth? Because you can never have enough cheesecloth. Just a snippet. Oops, got to clean my fingers. Going to lay that there. It is getting a bit bulky. But... <clears throat> I think if the other side we don't get crazy like another pocket we should be fine okay so let's just get the little tag out put the glue lid on Got glue lids everywhere open bit of ink because I can see that my cutting out is a little substandard. Punch a hole. Bit of, oh, we might use calico, I think, this time. Bring this calico in behind it. Oh, I was tearing off from that piece that I've glued down, so I've got to get another little piece of calico. So I was kept tearing strips off of that one, and now it's got a home. salvage at the end there okay just need a snippet it's like quarter of an inch get rid of all the little threads and then just cut yourself off a little length 
and then pop it through the hole. <clears throat> really easy. You could even add threads and also, oops, I'm not jiggered it up. Concentrate. Okay. So my little over, over the page piece is complete one side with some little goodies in it. That'll dry nicely. So yeah, a little pocket. And then on this side, I think, what will we do? I think we just put, I might even just put the stripe. Um, where is it going in the book? Okay, so let's have a little look at that first. So it was... Is going here okay so it's not going to be competing with anything so that's come up well so here I'm thinking we just do the stripe yeah keep it simple they can also put a photo on it and I'm not bringing in another element of paper I sort of try and keep it a little bit consistent doesn't always happen but this makes it easy especially if you pre-make pieces in advance pick three or four pieces of paper to collage with and stay with them until you run out and just make a series of elements that are all similar that way if they end up in a journal they sort of match does that make sense? But then you could do whatever. I tend to like to have a common thread running through my journals. That's just me, but maybe. So I'm just going to apply some glue. Simple, effective, love it. Thanks, Rachel, and whoever else created this that we can't quite remember. I have a feeling it might have been Rachel herself because I don't, I've definitely seen it before, if not a few times, and had forgotten about it. So that's why I just quickly, I was crafting, I was actually, I was doing some sewing, hand sewing. And I quickly just made up a three, pro, a three or four prototypes just to have in a box as an idea. Otherwise, you just forget, absolutely forget. So I tend to have a little box of, oh, I like that, and just quickly make it on the spot because otherwise, yeah, forgotten. So where did this go? It was on that music paper back here. So we've been there, we've been there. I don't know, I've flipped through so many times, I'm not sure where I am. So over the page it goes. Lovely. So I am going to put a paper clip there just to hold it in position. And then if they decide to pop a photo on it or just even paper clip something there at least it's you know got the ability to hold okay so I'm liking that I won't do anything here because they can do that I did stitch around bunny I was looking at bunny like he'd make a, a great pocket further along like with a little trim he could be a pocket same with this bunny so you know, there's plenty of opportunities for the person that gets the journal to have a little play, but that's what my feeling would be, is a pocket here to put something in, but I'm going to leave it so that they can create a pocket. So now we're into the next journal. Pretty happy with that. I feel like I need a word or something there, whether I've got something that's suitable. I keep picking that one up. It's butterflies. Sorry, bump the camera. 
I don't know if I've got even anything that's... Well, here we go. What's that say? Never fail. Yeah. I like that. Little pop of black. That's also, you know, a hint that you can go through magazines and cut out words for your journals and use them. Keep going, never fail, just keep going. One foot in front of the other. Okay, yeah, I like that. That's all good. That lace down there looks really good, happy with that. Got some goodies in the back here for them. Okay. Oh, I found that in the box of tricks. So for this envelope, I'm actually going to just glue this into position. So the envelope will have a flip on the front of it. And then there's space behind either just to write or do some collaging as well. So that sort of opens up to quite a nice little space to work across. Gosh, I'm so tempted just to go for it, but restrain. If it was something that I was going to keep, I would definitely play a little bit more there. But I'd rather put little elements through the whole thing and little hints of ideas sort of to encourage someone to play. So I've popped into that envelope there, that little card. This is a piece that I found in amongst my area here that I'm going to actually attach on here. I think that'll be a nice flip out and something to hang on to as you open up that page. So I'm going to attach that there. I like its size too because it will be quite a bit of glue gripping it due to the size of the piece. If I can get the glue to actually come out of the thingy. I might just put a bit of this on as well. Can't hurt. And then a bit of art glitter glue. That will really rip that won't be going anywhere so I'm going to just attach that there and you'll see that I've stitched around it which I did when I was doing my sewing machine work and that's the little snippet that was sitting on the desk from the previous episode that I wanted to do something with the card itself was already pre-made so all I did was stitch around it and I added in this little piece here. So that's that's really good. Now you could put a piece down here to make sure it doesn't go anywhere. But being that there's nearly a third of that card attached to the flip, it's not going to go anywhere. And I used the glue stick as well as art glitter glue. That I feel is really strong. But if that page, that flippy element was just on the edge there I'd definitely add a piece of paper just to really make it stay so I'm loving that and there's so much scope here to decorate just in that area but we've got a real rose theme happening so I'm happy with that so we'll leave that oh there's a little pocket there I'm not going to put anything in it because it looks like the flowers are coming out of it and they can add something to it so that's what I'm going to do there. Got another little flip here, which is one of Rachel's cards, journal cards. This here too. I've been thinking about what I can add to it and I've decided I'm not going to add anything. I like it as just a little element and I think um, they can add and it might be something that I'm just not even thinking about anyway. So I'm going to leave it. It could be glued down and have things slide into it like the last journal it could have something attached to it like a piece of embroidery um, that would be really sweet a little little piece of um, needlework attached to it so I'm gonna leave it it's just yeah I just don't have anything I want to do to that I feel like I need to leave it 
So we've got a belly band here and I had this, I've got a couple of them sitting in my box. These were ready to go into a journal and they were excess. So I've got three or four of them here. They're from a French antique book, a really old one. The paper feels gorgeous and the butterfly was already on with the little, little uh, cotton. So I just trimmed it down a little bit and I've slid that into there. So yeah, uh, incidentally, one of my managers is French and um, I, gave, I bought these books. I got about four of them a couple of years ago and I thought, gee, I hope the wording is okay. So I took them to work and got him to have a read of them and they were, they were like children's reading books and just generic sort of stories. So I sort of felt a little bit better about that. I've got a paper clip here. I'm just going to pop there and maybe find something sweet to go in there. Yeah, I'm liking the bunny. Okay, now I'm coming to the end of this little journal. How exciting. So that little bunny will sit there nicely. Was that paper clip from something else? Was it the flip over the page, maybe? No? I'll have to just double check why that paper clip was sitting there like that. Anyway, I'll double check a few times through the book. Now we're to the back. Lovely. Tab there to indicate, got some pieces here. I might just slide another element in there because I can't help myself. And these bunnies are looking at me. So they are gonna tuck in there. Lovely. Oh, I love it. Oh, there's still so much room to do things with it. And it's two journals in one. Can you believe there's just once a brown paper bag? And a big one at that, which we've cut in half to create two journals with this side flap thing happening. One flap became a journal, like so. Then the journal, another journal in the center, and then the flap goes around the entire thing. Oh gosh, gee, I love this. I love this one too, but no, I've made the announcement. It is going to go on the sale on the 1st of September. I'm not changing my mind. Oh, love it. Oh, love them both. Where's the other one? So there we go. I do need to just go through them both again to make sure I haven't missed anything. And I do need to attach that. Oh. See, it's the same principle. Flap this side protects the journal and creates a closure within the flap. And then there's this flap, which is adhered down to create pockets to gather bits and pieces on the front of the cover. Oh, just love them, love them. They feel beautiful. This would make a lovely set together as well because it's, you know, I've themed. I like that stitching that way. Look at that. See, my, it was going to go like that, but I just fell and it's gone to sit like that. Yeah. Yeah, look at that. It fell off and I picked it up, popped it back there and it was a different direction and I like that better. Yeah, isn't that amazing? And I think because everything is so lineal here, by having it go that way, straight away my eye was like, gee, that's what that works. And I think it's because we're cutting off that lineal look I love the curves, the curves of the 
piece on the side. Yeah, that's how it's going to be. I know what I'm yet to add to this is some little charms. So I will go through and sneak a few little charms in there as well, just for the fun of it. And they will be some little, little pieces like that. And I'll also grab my key. So I will go through and do that as well. Okay, everyone, I will say goodbye. And we're going to say these are completed bar a double check, a triple check and um, some little charms, but yeah, loving it. Absolutely loving it. I could even add something here. Look, I'm going off on another tangent here. Where is the bulb pins? Stop the video, I don't think so. So this little case here that I'm using, that was from my husband's garage and it was full of um, a little electrical connectors. And I noticed it was in his bin. So I've grabbed it out and given it a good clean. And it's now in my, I'm gonna open these beads up. Lordy, 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 hang in there. I just want to, don't drop them lid back on oh, i'm now spooked and what i'm going to do i don't know if this will look any good but i'm going to add that look i was saying goodbye and now i'm off on another tangent i just want to hang on this key another little charm oh no 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 <laughs> Oh, oh my goodness I've done it I've dropped it <laughs> oh goodness me so I'm gonna get another bead out unless I can see it is it still in my lap no it's under the table okay I got it I got it and you know in the process of getting it I spotted another bead so I'm going to just you know, no, I'm not. You know why? Because sometimes when you apply pressure to these little guys, they open. Now that key is going to have fingers on it, pushing and pulling and moving it through the enclosure. So I am not going to put it there because I will potentially be jabbing someone in the future with that um, charm. So I'm going to pin it here instead it will be a lot safer for all concerned including myself so I'm just going to pin it into that cluster of oh goodness I'm going to pin it into the cluster and just let it hang there that's just a little charm okay so I'll leave that actually open because I want to pop a few more little charms through and I'm going to open those beads in private so that if I drop any of them you lot won't be laughing hysterically at me because I know you are because I would be if I was watching you do it because it's pretty funny anyway I will say goodbye and my husband's arrived for breakfast so it's time to go and do that and then I can come back and do another video and I'll be starting on the third journal very excited Thank you. I'll see you all soon. Bye for now. Okay, let's just see what's been going on in their bedroom. Come on, Bandit. Round you go. I have on good authority that things went bad in here. And, um, yeah. Okay, so we have a hell of a mess. That bed is usually over there. And uh, that mat is in there. And as you can see, it exploded. Bandit, did it explode? It's lucky you weren't injured in that. Unbelievable. It's very dangerous, isn't it? Hey, Pepper, did you have anything to do with the explosion? I doubt it. So, yeah. All I'll say is, Bandit, see, oh, he stuck his nose in that hole. Hey, did you just do that? Bandit, did you just, hey, down here. No, he wants to stick me. Did you just stick your nose in that hole? I think you did. I think he's a guilty party. Wouldn't have been Pepper Peach. 
Hey, Pepper. This is their doggy enclosure. It's a temporary setup just to keep them safe at night. So, yeah. And if they get bored, that's what happens. Okay, bye.